boys and girls. This is unfortunately not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It is Dr. Perone's neighborhood. And I just wanted to um, read a story today. Uh, this is a shout out to Mr. Northcutt and all the third graders who are learning about author's purpose. Um, and so a couple uh, notable things to say about this story. First off, I don't know about you, but as you can see, uh, this book is pretty old uh, and it definitely is showing some wear and tear. It has, it has seen some love. Uh, it has been read many times, uh, both uh, when I was a child and as an adult. So kind of a cool story here. Uh, so this is called, Can I Keep Him? And it is uh, written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. And Stephen Kellogg actually um, is a friend uh, that I grew up with. And uh, uh, my father was very good friends with him. Uh, so I grew up knowing Stephen Kellogg and uh, enjoying all of the books and uh, things that he used to write uh, and still does write. And so it was kind of a neat experience. So I can kind of share a few of those things as I read this story. So can I keep him? And so as you can probably imagine, this is kind of cool too. You can see a little dedication on this page. It says for Nicholas and Elizabeth, that's the name of my sister. And it says from your friend, Stephen Kellogg. And what's kind of cool, another shout out to Mr. Northcutt is that in the, in the dedication page, it says, for Kevin. Kind of cool. All right, so have you ever tried to bring an animal home to see if you can convince your parents to, to keep it? Well, that's in a lot of ways what this title makes me think about. Can I keep him? And so as we're going through this, I want you thinking about what is the purpose that Stephen Kellogg is using in this book. Mom, I found this dog sitting all by himself. Can I keep him? I love the detail that Stephen Kellogg adds in his pictures. No, Arnold, dogs are too noisy. He would bark all the time and annoy Mr. and Mrs. Van Doon next door. Take him back where you found him. And he drew this awesome picture that shows Mr. and Mrs. Van Doon and all of their keep out, stop that dog, all of their very mean signs and their barbed wire, their very mean faces. I bet his neighbors really aren't that mean, but what I like about Stephen Kellogg is his imagination and what he does uh, from the eyes of a child and what he thinks about. I found a lost kitten wandering in the street. Can I keep him? Look at how cute that little kitten is in his arms. No, Arnold, your grandma is allergic to cat fur. If we kept it, she couldn't visit anymore. Take him back where you found him and please don't bring any more cats and dogs into the house. And a picture of his grandma standing with her bags at the door, seeing the kitty cat. I can't come in. Hmm. So far, I wonder what the author's purpose is. And so what's cool about authors who are also illustrators is that... Okay, so one of the things that's great about uh, an illustrator who is also an author is he can tell a story just by showing the pictures or drawing the pictures. And if I could narrate what this little boy is thinking, he's probably thinking about this very imaginative, wonderful forest where he finds a baby fawn all alone in the forest, not knowing what to do. And so he thinks, well, I will save that fawn. I'll make sure that he's okay. Because he looks like such a little, innocent, vulnerable fawn. But how is the little boy going to convince his mom? That's the question. I found a shy fawn at the edge of the forest. He can't bark and he doesn't have cat fur. Can I keep him? And mom says, what do you think she says? Try to imagine what your mom would say if, if you brought home a baby deer, a fawn, and you said, hey mom, can I keep this fawn? What would your mom say? Hmm. Okay. 
No, dear. Fawns grow up to be wild bucks. They have sharp hooves and antlers. In one week, our rugs and furniture would be cut to bits. I love this picture. <sighs> she has her hands in her hair. There's a spring coming out of the of the of the couch. I love it. Another great story. So you have this very long train from what looks like a traveling circus and you follow the tracks all the way back to wait a minute it almost looks like a bear fell off the train and of course the little boy is there to save it these are all the things that he's imagining what kind of things do you imagine i imagine times going back to when we could actually be together and we could actually be in school together and I could shop in stores without wearing a mask. But he imagines a little bear. There it is. A little bear that falls off the train. Here we go. What do you think he says? A funny little bear fell off a circus train. He wasn't hurt and I brought him home. He can't bark. He has no, he has bear fur and he has no hooves. Can I keep him? No, dear. Bears have a disagreeable odor. Ooh. The house will smell like a circus train. I love the adults and their disagreeable odors faces. And next he imagines the a tiger that walks away from the zoo and he is there to save him. Keeping tigers in cages is a popular subject nowadays. <laughs> At the zoo, Sweet Sally had three cubs. The zookeeper said that the zoo only needs two more tigers, so he gave me one for a pet. He can't bark. He has tiger fur. His paws are soft, and he smells nice. Can I keep him? No, dear. Tigers grow up to have terrible appetites. They eat enormous amounts of food, and sometimes they eat people. We could never afford to feed a tiger. Oh, my goodness. Those look like legs coming out of the tiger's mouth. That's scary. All right. The next is another image of this little boy's amazing imagination. And so it says, guess this python's weight and win the mystery prize. And what I love about... Uh, Stephen Kellogg and all of his details, you have to look very closely. So you could win. First place is a deluxe surprise prize. Second place is a free trip to the moon. Makes you wonder what the first prize is. The third place is six fat grapefruits. And fourth, you can hardly see, is a raisin. I don't know how we go from a trip to the moon to a raisin, but there you have it. So I imagine that this boy imagined that he guesses correctly, right? A snake man at the carnival, a snake man at the carnival ran a contest to see who could guess how much the python weighs. I guessed right, and first prize was the snake. Yes, you guessed it. He makes no noise, he has no fur, he has no hooves, he smells sweet, and he can go for a month without food. Can I keep him? What I like is the irony that she is using the uh, vacuum and it kind of looks like a snake. No, dear. Pythons are untidy reptiles. They slither around and shed their scaly skins all over the house. The skins clog the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> she says it like she's done this before. Have you ever gotten snake skin caught in your vacuum cleaner? I used to have a snake actually in my office. It was pretty cool. So it's a no-go on snakes either. All right, so now he imagines this really incredible scene. And it's of this old man who is chipping away in some sort of iceberg. It looks like he's been living there for a long time. His address says, Dr. Coot. Probably far up in Antarctica, well, far south in Antarctica or in the North Pole area. And look, he is chipping out this giant animal. And he's imagining, the little boy's imagining that he's there. In shorts, by the way. I wouldn't wear that in that kind of environment. So far, what do you think? What do you think is the author's purpose 
in this book? What do you think the boy is trying to do? And that's what can help you. If you start to imagine the main character and what the main character is thinking about and the choices that he's making, then you can imagine what it is that the author is trying to encourage. So he says, in Alaska, I saw a scientist chipping a dinosaur out of ice. When the dinosaur defrosted, he was still alive. The museum didn't want a live dinosaur, so I brought him home. He doesn't bark. He has no fur. He has big, soft feet. He doesn't shed. Alaska? When were you ever in Alaska? And who ever heard of a dinosaur for a pet? But I'm lonely. Will you play with me? Do you ever feel that way sometimes? Being lonely and wanting people to play with you? I know little May Lynn keeps asking all of us if we want to play with her. <laughs> She's been pretty bored during this quarantine. I'd like to, Arnold, but I'm busy. Why don't you turn, uh, why don't you run outside and play in the swing or ride your bike or dig in the sandbox? <laughs> and then the next day, he just moved down the street. He doesn't bark. He has no fur. He has no hooves. He smells like us. He doesn't eat much. He doesn't shed. His name is Ralph. And he says he'll be my friend. Can I keep him? <laughs> Mom says, no, dear, you can't keep him. But he may be your friend and stay and play this afternoon. Now go outside and please, no more questions about animals. And this is him telling his friend about all of the animals that someday he wants to have. Pretty neat book. Uh-oh, and he comes back with a pigeon. And you know what he's going to ask mom at that point. So, speaking of the author, here is an old picture of Stephen Kellogg. This is probably before I really knew him. Uh, this is him as a young man. I knew him as an old guy, and he would give out lots and lots of Halloween candy when we'd go to his house. A huge cauldron. He'd pour it right into our bags. But that's not his purpose. So his purpose in this book, I think you can probably answer, but it's so that the little boy can convince his mom to get him a pet because he's lonely. And so he's asking for something. And so what's the word? that you can think of when an author wants the main character to, to convince you of something. Persuasion. There you go. So this is a book all about an author's persuasive writing so that the mom in this story will play with her son. There you go. It's a great, great book, great author. And last but not least, here's the back cover. And it's of a little boy and his new best friend, Ralph, riding on the back of some really cool large bird, like an ostrich or something. Pretty neat book. All right. Until another day. It's Dr. Perone signing off. Make sure to grow a little more today.